All right, guys, back in the hangar working on the uh, 750. So I've been, uh, you know, it's kind of tough. We got this Corona thing going and gives you a great opportunity to get a lot of work done on your airplane, except I'm working from home. So I spend eight, nine hours a day sitting in my office inside. And then by the time I'm done with that, you get dinner and all that. So I'm still trying to make some progress. Um, but then it's starting to get nice out, so what do you got to do? Oh, you got to do your yard work. You got to get stuff ready to go. So, struggling a little bit with the airplane. I'm so close, but yet so far. So, where I'm at right now is I need a little victory. I put my exhaust system on, and I have I kind of made the engine run. And what I mean by that is I gave it a shot of ether, made it pop, and man, that was exciting. So now what I'm doing is I'm going to finish the exhaust. So what I, what's going on is I have the manifolds or the stacks are attached. The Y pipe is, ex, is attached. And what I went with is I went with the Vetterman exhaust. I went with it for a couple of reasons. Number one, I thought it sounded cool to get that little extra horsepower with the crossover exhaust. But number two, I really like the price. So I looked at pricing for uh, exhaust systems, and I got anywhere from two thousand up to thirty-five hundred dollars for a standard exhaust. I got a hold of Vetterman and talked with him, and without the muffler, which I really don't care one way or another at this moment. So if I just go with a straight crossover pipe, it was really reasonable. So keep that in mind. Um, anyhow, so I need a little victory. I need to get something finished. And once I get something finished, then I'll be able to get psyched about this again. So where I'm at right now is, again, I do have the exhaust is attached to the airplane, as you can see. I have my EGTs are on, which is good. But what I don't have done is I don't, number one, I don't have the heat muffs on. So I've got carburetor and cabin heat muffs here. And then I have this plethora of mounting brackets. You know, so now here's my problem. In order to make this work, I have to do that one thing that I just hate. I have to read. Reading is just no fun. I'm an audible kind of guy. I have audible books. That's the only way to go. And that's what's cool about the John Croak thing. You know, that home built help. It's a video. You can watch it. I'm more a visual or audio type of guy. That, you know, me with my, I hate to say, self diagnosed ADHD, but, you know, reading is, uh, it's actually a little tough because what you do is you start reading. And then you jump ahead and then you think about what you're going to have for dinner and then you're going to do this and you're going to do that. So now I got to sit down and read. So I have my cup of coffee, which my wife will be mad because I took the cup outside. I have my snack and I'm going to start reading. And then once I start reading, get through it, then I am going to go ahead and start, well, finishing the exhaust. So. I will keep you guys posted. You'll get to see some more in a little while. The next step is we slid the muff over the top of my end plates, and it's not quite what I expected. I actually expected the flange on the end plates to actually capture the end of your exhaust shroud, 
but that's not actually the case. So after reading, God, reading really. Anyways, after looking at that, what you actually do is you actually take a four inch clamp and a four inch clamp goes over the top of the muff. And that is what actually seals it to those end plates, which works. I don't see a problem with it. It's just really not what I was thinking was the way this functioned. I actually thought, like I said, that end cap would actually capture it and you'd use the through, the through bolts or the threaded rod to tighten up against that shroud, but that's not the case. Reading is fundamental and sometimes I have to read. Ugh, what a bother. My wife says, my, my wife actually asked me, do you even know how to read? Because she sees me listen to those audio books all the time. I get that from my dad. He, uh, he's one of those guys who never goes anywhere without an audio book going. He's cutting his grass with it. So I'm tightening up this last piece here, and I will officially, I officially have a Vetterman heat muff. So that's kind of cool. So one of the things they do say is don't tighten up your end bolts or your end nuts um, until you know what orientation you need this to be in. Because you, as you can see, you can slide it around to get your hoses in where you need to. So that'll be interesting. So that will be the next step. I've got this one done. And the next one is this muff here. Anyhow, I'm going to keep playing. All right, so I'm on to the next heat muff. So this heat muff is a heck of a lot different. Um, pretty straightforward. So you've got a uh, end flange there. And this guy here, according to what I can figure, because I'm relatively intelligent, and they didn't actually send me any information on this muff here. So attached to this heat muff here was two uh, clamps. So that clamp happens to fit over there real nice. So I'm looking and assuming, and you know what they say about assuming. So we're just going to tighten him up. And I think that is all we're doing on this guy. I might do a little more research, but I'm thinking there's nothing else to it. Pretty straightforward stuff here. So ironically, looking at this, just because I am... Uh, a guy who's never built an airplane before. I, I, me and a buddy of mine rebuilt ultralights, but I've never built my own airplane. Um, is this my carburetor heat muff? Or is this my cabin heat muff? Well, the directions for the other one show that this is that the first one I did was the cabin heat muff, so this must be my carburetor heat muff. So now I've got this guy tightened up. And I'm not going to over tighten it until I know exactly what orientation I've got. So, heat muff number two. That means I've done two positive things today. So the next step is I'm going to officially hang my exhaust using this nightmare of parts here that I have no idea what yet for, but reading. Now I'm going to read again. Ugh, reading. Who wants to do it? John, John Croak, this is to you. John, you got to do these, man. I, I don't want to have to, I don't have to read. I want to watch your videos and build the perfect airplane. Come on, John, get after it. All right. All right, so as you can see, I've got the next one marked, and I'm ready to start cutting. So I'm going to set you down here, give you a nice view of what I've got going on. I'm going to lock this guy in in a vise. Of course, you can't see, but I've got the proper PPE on. Alright, tighten that up. I'm just going to use a cutoff wheel. Make some sparks. taken care of so I'm now cut to the right length and now I'm going to use a uh, 90 to clean it up
reason I'm spending so much time making sure it's good and cleaned up is because I want to make sure that there's no issues. As you can see, nice and clean now. I want to make sure that when I take the rubber hose and slide the rubber hose on it, I'm not going to get any, uh, any burrs or anything like that. So, on to the next one. All right, so I have the hose. I've got it marked. Now I'm going to cut it to length. You know, this hose has um, metal going through it, so I'm going to use my cutoff wheel to cut it off. Just an easy way to do it. That just makes things a little bit nicer for you, a little easier. And here we go. best part about that is, I don't know if you guys can see the smoke, it reminds me of high school, out doing brake torques in my car because man, we got a lot of rubbers burning here. And interestingly enough, it doesn't look like there's metal in it. So, I didn't need to do that, but hey, I got to relive my childhood doing brake torques. Childhood, right? I still do them. Don't tell anybody. I'm a kid at heart. All right, with my hose cut to length, now I will put my handy dandy clamp on, and then with my hanger, take the hanger, put it in, and then we'll tighten up the uh, clamp here. Once I get this clamp tightened up, I will officially have a hanger ready to try on the airplane. And this will take care of vibration with the rubber hose. So, we're in pretty good shape here. Now we'll do a little bit of camera magic and get the second one done. All right, like I said, through a little bit of magic, I was able to get both of these sides done. So, basically what you have is you have this side right here is gonna mount to the engine mount, like so. And this side right here is gonna mount to the tailpipe and just gonna be a support. The cool part is the rubber gives it flexibility for movement. And that's what you're trying to accomplish here. So now I'm going to go take it and try it out on the airplane and see what it looks like. I'll have to adjust the angles here. And I might actually have to adjust the depth here in order to get it exactly the way I want it. But we'll give it a shot and see what we got. All right. So basically what we have is here we have the, um, the support that goes around the tailpipe. And then coming up here, I come up to a cable clamp that goes up to my engine mount. So now we're going to do a quick little trial. Let me see if I can get that camera to where you can see exactly what I'm doing. So I'm going to take it and just temp it through there and then take a look here and see, man, that's not too bad, is it? Looks like I'm going to work just fine and that should give me all the vibration uh, and all the movement that I need. So I think I'm actually in pretty good shape. I will be able to button this guy up. I need to, I'm going to rotate it so I can get that clamp up here. I'm going to actually rotate the uh, tube so that clamp is away from my, uh, away from my nose gear. It's, it would clear, but I just give myself a little extra room. So looking like we're doing pretty good. On to the next side. So here is my second one, all ready to roll. So I'm actually going to take a couple pictures of this, and I'm going to send them to Vetterman and see what he thinks of this, just because I've never done it before. And uh, I'd like to get uh, a little bit of, hey, that looks really good. That's the way I roll. Anyhow, um, yeah, so I officially have my baffles on. I'm hanging my exhaust just like it's supposed to. So I'm pretty pleased with my uh, progress so far today. So we'll just need to, uh, well, close this video. All right, so I'm back. Same scenario, looking at the exhaust. And I think I needed to add one more brace. So in order to add that one more brace, which would tie the two pieces of exhaust tailpipe to each other, um, I actually had to move one of my mounting brackets, which I thought was really well put together. But that's one of those deals where, you know, there's no instruction manual here. So 
you got to figure out how to do it yourself. And, and sometimes the first time you do it, it ain't what you're looking for. Sometimes it's not the second or the third, maybe even the fourth. But I'm pretty pleased right now with what I have. I'm still going to take it. I'm still going to take some pictures, and I'm going to send it off to Vetterman and see what he says. Um, he was a pretty good guy and gave me a lot of good information, so I, I would assume he would say, holy crap, what are you thinking, Doug? That's no good. Redo it. And that would make, you know, three times, which would be really awesome and par for the course. But anyhow, so let me just uh, show you what I've done. Okay, you'll see that I actually moved this vertical. I moved it to the other, to a different tube. And then what I did is I actually took a, a 45, or not a 45, a little less than 90 degree angle uh, here. And I took all the way across. And that'll actually cinch the two tailpipes together as opposed to allowing those to flop back and forth right and left. So now I have my vertical support here, and then I have my horizontal support here. So I'm pretty pleased with that. I think that's actually pretty damn good. I just now need to, you know, once he approves it and says that, hey, that looks good, then I'm gonna go ahead and um, I'll go ahead and tighten everything up. So one of the other things that I'll probably do is I'll actually push this hose out just a little bit to give myself a little more bend here to get it. I still have clearance to the the um, nose gear Delrin, but I can give myself a little more arc there, which will allow me to uh, clear it even more. So I think I'm in pretty good shape. We'll walk around the other side. Gives you a little better view here. So again, there's my vertical tied into the 90 there, and it shoots across, ties the two together. And I think I think we got a winner here, guys. So anyhow, so even though I ended that last video, I uh, you know redid some. So the last thing, and I always say the last thing like nine times before I finish a job. The last thing that I have to do is I have to put the clamp from the tailpipe to your exhaust stacks. So it's kind of interesting. So I'm looking at the actual part that they gave me, the clamp that they gave me, and it's kind of hard to see, but if you look inside there, there's a pin in there. And I'm thinking, what the hell is that pin? I went through the directions. I can't find anything in the directions that say that what that's for. So I'm thinking, I know it's, you know, it's to lock everything in place so it can't rotate, but I don't know how. So the only thing I'm thinking is maybe, but I don't know, maybe you do it where you have the relief cut here um, for sliding it over and maybe you dent it. I, I, I don't get it. So I keep looking and I keep looking and I keep looking and then I see, remember, reading's fundamental. I don't know if you can see that or not, but right here it says drill hole for pin clamp. The directions are on the part. Uh-oh. 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 I'm in trouble. I must need to work on the garden. I must need to do something. Hey, look, it's my lovely wife right there. She's the one I talk about all the time. So that's the fun part about this. You always get to keep playing and working until you figure out exactly what you want. So I'm pretty pleased. Anyhow, uh, like and subscribe and comment. I love comments. Have somebody tell me, Jesus, Doug, you did that wrong. So I'm going to finish with the deep thought instead of my typical joke. So, here's the deep thoughts by Doug. If at first you don't succeed, skydiving's probably not for you. Have a good day, guys.